Welcome Joystick Justice League to the sixth episode of Roundtable. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. And tonight we are battling the topic of VR. This is the episode entitled, Are We Ready for VR or Virtual Reality? This podcast was in in, in the works for a while. We, we, we had wanted to do this a couple of weeks ago, but we knew that potentially uh, Sony was gonna reveal something at GDC last week. But also some major news tonight, which we're gonna be getting into, that has really, uh, really changed the layout of the chessboard in this coming Cold War, as, as Review Tech USA kind of cleverly puts it. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the coming Cold War of VR in the eighth generation between, I'd say, Sony and, and PC primarily, but you know, Microsoft has, has, has expressed their interest. Uh, let's start with, with the history of VR, Joe. For the people who still have, aren't really hip to what's going on with all the developments in virtual reality, maybe they, maybe they heard about it back in the 90s, they heard about things that happened in the course of the years, but maybe they haven't caught up with where we are yet. Let's let's start from the beginning, Joe. What, what can you tell us about your earliest recollections of, of VR? You know, it, it's this isn't uh, all that new of a thing. You know, companies have, have actually been researching this and uh, kind of looking into this for a long time, uh, going as far back as the early to mid 90s with uh, systems like virtuality. You know, uh, the, Jaguar had something similar, and even Nintendo's infamous Virtual Boy. You know, this okay, is, I'm going to stop you there for a second. You mentioned virtu virtuality. Uh, yeah. I just showed you an old promo video from 1994. Mm -hmm. Virtual Virtuality was released back in 91. I just showed you a promo video from 94. What'd you think? It was it, it was interesting. It, it was it was limited by the, the the technology at the time, right? Graphics were shoddy. I mean, one of the one of the representatives was actually crit critiquing it. Saying yeah. that, like, you know, I'm not. The, the graphics are kind of shoddy in comparison to what Sega and Nintendo are doing at mm -hmm. this point. You know, there's problems with latency. I mean, he mentioned it right there, and then and, and he really felt the critic of this was that. So I wouldn't say it was a promotional video. It was more of like a, a news piece. But this guy was basically saying that I feel that this is still the novelty stage. Absolutely, uh, and I agree. And uh, you know, it's uh, going forward. You know, we're, we're going to see if. Uh, if, if uh, that, that tends to happen, you know, when these new kind of ways of playing games are, are kind of introduced, and you know, we, we saw this a lot with the, with the Wii, with the motion controls, it, it felt like it was something that was kind of rushed in and kind of forced upon us before people were really ready. Okay, Joe, let's just say I'm a layman now, and, and you need to explain to me what VR is. Like, what, 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 explain in a nutshell what it means, virtual reality for the layman here, what, what this can bring to gaming, in, in theory. In, th in theory, what this could, could allow you is uh, to feel like a, a complete kind of immersive experience, to feel like you're actually inside of a game, and where, where you're, you're not just you're, where you're not just back playing a, a character that you're watching. You're, you actually are that character. That's basically the the feeling that they're trying to go for here. It's the elimination of the walls uh, of the exactly. of the screen that we're accustomed to, and like you said, complete immersion. But in order to create complete immersion. What what factors do you feel really need to be addressed? Things need, it needs to be smooth. Your interaction and in the way you move needs to be smooth. It needs to be at, done at a proper frame rate so that it's not it do, it doesn't feel laggy, but it's also not also not too jarring for your brain. I mean, there's a number of factors that go into it to actually successfully kind of executing. This. Well, you mentioned latency. Like, what what, what could like for for anybody who doesn't understand? Like, we mentioned this in an old. Yeah. Uh, news piece that we did, but for anybody who didn't see that, what, what is the what, what are the problems with latency, Joe? Basically, what late first of all, what late latency is uh, when it comes to virtuality, like especially if you're if you're looking, you have the headset on, and this has been an issue for a long time with these things, is that you would look, and then then you would see the movement, and that that, that could that would immediately take you out of the experience. And what uh, Oculus Rift and uh, and what Morpheus now. By Sony, they've they've come close to basically eliminating this, but but still the the issue with this, even with it becoming instantaneous, is that it still conflicts. It still creates a bit of a conflict in your brain, especially if you're running. Your brain, the the screen, and what you're seeing is telling you that you're running, but you're you're sitting there stationary, and and it that, that's still a major hurdle when it comes to this technology. It's a disconnect, and as we watched a video by Adam Sessler talking about this, he, he referred to this as future shock, in the Absolutely. sense that it's it's a, it's a new way of perception, and I get that because think about it. I mean, yes, they are working on you know uh, 
devices that can help with the whole mo the actual physical motion tracking problem. I know there's that hexagonal unit that was developed, you know, so that you could it was kind of like a trackpad that you could walk on, but still your brain and, and, and the illusion of the movement that your 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 body's supposed to be participating in are connecting. And I think that you, you just can't put those together into an experience that's comfortable beyond say 10 15 minutes. Yeah. You no, know, o o Oculus, they've been experimenting a little bit. This is actually referring again to something that we talked about before. They actually were experimenting with a sort of like a, a treadmill thing to where you, were, you actually were moving a little bit. And I, I think that they were experimenting with a little bit to see if that would solve some of those issues. Yeah, we saw it used in Minecraft. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, we're, we're looking at prototypes. I mean, it, it's true that some of the current iterations of VR tech are, are solving these issues. Before we, we really get into where we are now, let's just kind of address a few more of the, the examples that you mentioned just for fun. I mean, you mentioned the, the Atari Jaguar uh, tried to do the virtual reality thing. I mean, come on, that that hardware was it was garbage to begin with. There's no way it would have been able to help handle anything. And, yeah. and of course, everybody knows about the Virtual Boy. And, and I don't want to gloss over the Virtual Boy because I think that while we may laugh at virtuality, we understand that that was 1991. It was at least yes. they were trying to. That, I think that's what inspired systems like the Oculus Rift to get built. But the Virtual Boy, on the other hand, took the concept of virtual reality and shat all over it. And I think that's yeah. why it took so long for the Oculus Rift to materialize because it like there was this demonization around yeah. the Virtual Boy. Like, what do you remember about the Virtual Boy? I, I, I actually got got to try this out, and it was a very strange experience because like uh, keep in mind at that time we we, we, we went from from playing with, with a controller to this thing that you were peeking into and it was a very bizarre i just remember it being a very jarring very uncomfortable experience trying to play a game in that fashion it I was remember, it relied on a red and black interface i remember even at one point i think it was uh they, it was actually uh they it was some promotion i think they had with pepsi or one of these fast food places where they uh, it was actually something you could win it was like a it was actually like a grand prize for like this kind of a promotion sort of like what tim horns does with roll up the rim it was like a it was like a prize you could win with like the virtual boy and i remember even at that time talking to some some fellow gamers at the, and i said hey do you think that that would be kind of something you'd want to win they went no like uh, <laughs> uh, you know uh, 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 we, we still wanted we were, we were still in, in that you know when we started start pretty much to this day you know we, we still like to to Hold the controller and be playing in that way. It's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to kind of wrap your your head around. I remember that with the Virtual Boy. It was a very strange experience for me. Yeah, it was the eye strain, and I mean, you yeah. knew there was a problem in the the hype commercial for the Virtual Boy. They could barely show any screen footage. It was more yeah. of just a kid just, you know, like acting like Ray Charles uh, actually, with, the, with the headset actually, on. And I actually barfed on the one that I used, you know, and I actually got in shit for that. But uh, you know, that's beside the point. But uh, it's it, it just it, and it, again, that's a, a big hurdle with the, this VR is is that feeling of motion sickness, and, it, and it's going to be a really tough thing to overcome. And I think, uh, especially with what uh, some of the stuff that Sony's doing with the Morpheus and actually using some of the other hardware peripherals that you have to track the motion, I, I think that's going to help it out a little bit. I think so too. I, I think so too. So. We see that this obviously failed many times to come about. Like I said, I think it really hit a wall with the Virtual Boy and then nobody wanted to talk about it for a long time. You mentioned something really compelling there, Joe, and I know that Review Tech USA has mentioned this many times, and I feel the same way. At the heart of gaming, it's me in front of a screen, relaxing on my couch with a controller and a nice 4K display. I'm more excited about 4K gaming which I predict is coming in the ninth generation. Yes, I'm I'm more excited about that than I am about VR. I would it's it's like we were talking about this before we started recording. There's a reason why Hollywood has never tried to go after say VR movie watching because it's it's a relaxing passive activity. You don't always need to be an active participant in everything you entertain yourself with. Now, granted, video games are interactive. But I mean, we both agree, there are certain games that have this kind of zen-like thing that aren't very hard to play. You just want to sit back, you don't want to move. It's a long day. You don't want to sit and weave and bob around with this big headset on in your living room. You just want to chill and take something impassively. That I think is the big barrier here. I don't think, and that's the problem. I think I see so much hype saying, oh, is, is VR going to replace 
gameplay, I'm like, hell no. At least and, not until like another three generations down the road of maybe kids who never grew up with the traditional video game experience. I think this is what we've become accustomed to. And I think that, yes, it, it stands to be a novelty and potentially this could be a big ass waste of R&D money. What do you think about that? And, and I'm also going to touch on something else too. And, and also in going back further and, and up to the current day with these new kits and stuff coming out, it, it's, it's difficult for for them to actually get developers interested in this as, as being a viable thing that gamers are going to want, you know, it's get, get, getting developers on board for this. I mean, it's 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 been it's been difficult and, it, and it's still difficult right now. I think it's difficult because developers are already in a crisis where of the economy and this whole conservative atmosphere in video gaming in general, where. One bad game idea can tank your whole company. The mighty Sony Santa Monica. Yep. Look what they're laying people off because of possibly God of War Ascension. I don't know, and but I, I, it didn't sell as well as they thought it was going to go, and that that was a big company. And I'm, I'm I'm afraid that uh, that developers are just going to be scared to take that gamble. That like you, like you just said, some of them are they're you know, not all of them are in dire straits, but I mean there, there's some. And, and and they're just they're, I don't think that they're going to be willing to, to take this gamble. I think that they would be more willing to gamble on 4K gaming, like you said, because of what we talked about it. it because it's still going to be that kind of passive experience. You know, it, it's you know that, that, that's that's just my two cents. I think so. I, I think I think you're asking too much of the industry right now. Like you said, I mean, here here's the thing with with VR gaming. You can't just take existing games and make them work in a VR environment, okay? Uh, maybe to a certain, like even Notch, who we're gonna get into, the creator of Minecraft, expressed this concern even when he, he was developing, and I, I wanna stress the word, was developing Minecraft, up until tonight for the Oculus Rift. Um, you have to, we're gonna get back into that in a sec, but I really wanna talk about genres for a second. You can't, take these games, and I know I'm quoting Review Tech USA a lot, but he was one of the first people to speak out about this, and he was right. He said that you can't just take a game like Call of Duty, or Titanfall, or, or Mirror's Edge, like a fast, or any fast-paced first-person game you play, like imagine Quake. Imagine oh, playing God. Quake in VR. You would throw up all over the Virtual Boy just like you just did, oh, yeah. man. Like, it's like, how are you going to handle that with your head bobbing around and that, that motion, especially what you were talking about, Joe, that disconnect between perceived motion and what your body's actually doing? And another, another important uh, issue to bring up as well, and I, I think you could uh, really uh, t uh, specifically talk about the PS4 with Morpheus, is the, is the hardware of the console going to be even able to, to fully... You know, is it going to be able to to actually handle h handle the virtuality experience? Like, uh, you know, it's uh, I, I think the hardware is already kind of be, being pushed to the max as it is. To add this on top of it, I'm not too sure. That's exactly my problem. I mean, when we already see the PS4 struggling to maintain a full 1080p 60 frame experience across games, are you really going to ask developers to do that same thing on two separate screens? Remember that for virtual reality to work, you need to paint two separate screens. This isn't just a mirrored image of the same screen. It's it, it's stereoscopic vision. There's a, it's a tactical demand. So really, they they've got to make games that are going to embrace these technical technological limitations and that's why i think that up until again today the idea of notch doing a, a, an oculus rift version of minecraft would have been a great way to start uh, yes. you know i i think it's a, it can it can be slow enough pace you need a slow paced game you need more of a meditative game that's not going to make you sick otherwise yeah this is going to be like a 10 to 15 minute experience that's all i think your body will be able to handle so it's, it's just about thinking outside the box and i think that's already enough of a challenge to all these triple a's who can, again who can live and die by just one bad ip and all, yeah. not to, to mention but all the innovation that's going on in the indie realm that's basically saying well why do we need vr to be innovative Look at all these games that are coming out on Steam that are already like sprouting innovation for 10, 15 bucks a pop. Yep, uh, absolutely. And like you said, for for a single game could take down. Uh, I, th I think one of, one of one of 
One example I can actually remember from the seventh generation was a uh, actually it was a very very good game. It was uh, called the Saboteur. It was made by uh, one of uh, EA's actually internal studios, and that game arguably was actually it was, it was actually one of my favorite games from that generation. But it wasn't well received, and that that develop that, that developer they they were done after that. That was it. You know, all it takes is one little misstep like that, and then. They're done. It's a very cut. It's a very cutthroat industry the way it is right now. And that's without why having I, this thrown on top of it. And that's why I think if there's any indie dev- developers who want to make stuff for VR, that's what they're only going to be doing. I don't think you're going to see a lot of these other struggling indie devs just start to to embrace. I don't think you're going to see Jonathan Blow all of a sudden try to no. make the witness for VR. He's already got yeah. enough of a risk in trying to sell this game on uh, as it is. All right, mm-hmm. and that's the perfect kind of game for VR, which is ironic in itself. But uh, you know, that's the thing. Really, it's only the heavyweights who can. Inf- who can afford to invest in this and already Ubisoft. Ubisoft is saying, no, if we don't see at least 1 million units sold for any of these competing platforms, we're not investing. So what do you think that, that, what kind of message does that send to the industry when Ubisoft says, hell no? You know, they're, they're one of the, they're, they're, they're at the top and they're, they're not going to get into it unless they see it as a viable option. They're, that's the thing, man. Because even the Giants, they're they're not too big to fall. You know, we saw what happened to Capcom in the last couple of years of this generation. How they're basically on their final gas right now. They're 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 trying to recoup off of their older titles like Ducktales and Strider, and they're trying and they're taking and they're they're making deep down free to play. They they, you know? they they definitely will be on the list of developers that will not be doing VR. I'll tell you right now, those yeah. guys. They're, they're, they're just they're, they're just struggling to stay afloat. They're a company that is not even going to attempt it. I'm going to say it right now. Okay. Well, we are journalists, Joe, and we gotta we gotta look at both sides. So, okay, let's yep. go back. Now, let's talk about what VR has done right because obviously Sony believes in this. Okay, with the recently yes. revealed Project Morpheus, and as we're going to get into a little story with Facebook, some other major interests have have a major. Uh, advocacy for VR as well. So let's talk about Oculus Rift, Joe. Tell us a little bit about how Oculus, what you knew about Oculus Rift up until now and what it was doing right and why it became like the leader in VR. It, they were, they became the leader because they were one of the first ones. I'm starting to repeat myself a little bit, but they were the first ones to get, start to solve some of the problems with the latency, getting the, the actual unit down to a, a workable size to where it wasn't, didn't feel like it was going to crush the, the bridge of your nose, you know. It's uh, they they were really starting to get a handle on some of those major hurdles, and as well with with, with Morpheus, they they've gotten it down to actually a really kind of a sexy, kind of a sleek looking machine, you know. And they they've really nailed the issue with uh, the big one. I think it was always been size. It always it always felt like it was something really heavy on your head. Yeah, and you know what? I think the other angle, there's a couple of other angles too there. Number one was the community involvement. The fact that they made the development kits uh, affordable enough to get it out to people like PewDiePie and all these major YouTube broadcasters who openly tried out these games and promoted them. So, boom, you see all these Skyrim videos coming out and everybody's getting really excited about it. And then they're seeing Mirror's Edge mods and and all this fun stuff and Minecraft's being done. They're talking about, you know, re- redoing Team Fortress 2 to work from a, from a visual perspective and that's another point too right joe that you like you said you can't take say team fortress or call of duty and automatically port it over to vr because you're gonna feel like a dwarf exactly that's it's an issue it's just it's i don't know what what it actually it is that that causes that but it, it's got something to do with the scaling or, or just the, the perspective that you're at but like you said you feel like you're 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 a little midget shooting at big people you know that's right yeah. so it's, it's it's a whole pro- process of you have to Re- resize the doors, like restructure all the maps, oh, just gosh, to make yeah. it seem like, like you say, you're not like a little Oompa Loompa running around <laughs> and, and with a pea shooter. Yeah. So this isn't just the easy thing. Like you say, we're gonna have to see brand new IPs built from the ground up. But that that seemed to be where Oculus was heading, and especially when they acquired John Carmack yeah. near the end of 2013 from ID. That was big news, man. It was. You know, you had one of the uh, one of the grandfathers of the first person uh, shooter genre. Tackling something where you know that, that that's you know because and uh, this is actually something we talked about before we started broadcasting is that the, these headsets it, it really seems to be set up to, to really enhance that first-person perspective, which is 
getting, I think I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but it's going to be, I think, this this whole VR thing, I think, is really going to enhance that first-person perspective, but I'm worried that it's, as for third-person games and kind of strategy games and that kind of stuff, it's going to feel kind of out of place where it's only kind of slightly enhancing the experience you're already getting. Yeah, I think I think it really limits what you can do. I mean, I, I may be d dead wrong. Like, I'm trying to wrap my head around how you could, you could do a non-first-person game and make it work from a VR front. Now, to counter you with the third-person argument, if you're, say, a god or a puppet master in the clouds and you have your third person in front of you, but you're also, you see your hands throwing lightning bolts, that could be an idea. Also, yes. you could reimagine the 2D game. You know, maybe by moving your head, you can see more of the playing field, or 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 you can you can play multiple events in one screen by turning your head. Who who knows what's gonna what's gonna happen? But yeah. like I said, by by just it's it's not impressing me by just porting over these existing games because I know that even with Skyrim, I'm not gonna sit there and play for six hours on an Oculus Rift. That's gonna kill my my brain. At the exhausting. end of the day, that's that's a meditative game. You just want to sit back, relax, and enjoy that. You don't need to be completely immersed in that. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, you'd have to talk to the people who have actually tried it. I'm just kind of saying hearsay. But anyway. Like you're saying, Joe, Oculus really took this seriously. Like they addressed a lot of the concerns that were levied over like the last decade and a half. Mm -hmm. And they were even they're even looking into 4K. You know, this is still in development. They just announced at GDC that the Oculus Rift development kit 2 will be coming out this July for 350 bucks. It's yep. going to include a higher resolution OLED display, and that's great because that those we, we saw that on the Vita, we see that on TVs. It, it, it's it's very easy on the eyes. Okay, so I, I like that. They're saying low persistence motion tracking, latency reducing software, of course, and included, and this is the big the big one, the infrared camera, which yes. I see as pretty much a reaction to what we're gonna be getting into next, Sony's Project Morpheus, but I think this is what was what what, what the Oculus Rift was really lacking, was the idea of, of sharing that technology burden among different devices. Yeah, they, they seem to really be incorporating like the move, the uh, the, the the camera that you get with the PS4. The, well, even, you're talking even, about Project Morpheus. E e yeah, see, and even even the control in your hand, er everything kind of combined, working together to kind of create this virtual experience. And and, and I, I think I, th I think that that's going to help that along to to make it more uh, more of a reality and kind of to not just have it just relying on on just the, the headset, using everything in unison. Yeah, you, you mentioned, okay, so you've mentioned the competition now. We've, we kind of talked about where Oculus Rift came from, what it's done right, where it's going. Now let's talk about a developing story that just dropped tonight that kind of bridges these two ways in a way that I'll, we'll explain later. But we just heard that Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook just purchased Oculus Rift for $2 billion. <laughs> so what were your immediate reactions to that, Joe? What do you think about that acquisition? Well, my first immediate reaction was, holy crap. And I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I had a, I had a feeling that that uh, you know if they didn't get out, that they would possibly get by out. But somebody, I, I, I figured if that was going to happen, it might have been like Samsung or or Google or maybe even Microsoft or something. But but Facebook wasn't even on my radar. Like I I I, I got totally blindsided by this. But from a being bought out by a social networking company, I mean, wow. It, it's it's surprising, but it's not surprising. I mean, when you hear rumors that Amazon's planning to buy the Xbox license, anything's up for grabs, man. Like this industry is unstable. We like yeah. to think that this is stable. No, man, the industry is in, is in an, is being uprooted right now. We don't know what the industry is going to look like in the next four years. Nope. We, we we know that Sony's sitting pr fairly pretty. We don't know how Microsoft's looking right now. Nope. I, that's a side, That's beside the point, but it's really not because Microsoft has announced that they want to get into this battle too. We'll get to that in a second, um, but really, let's look at why Facebook wants to buy Oculus Rift. Okay, yeah, it seems weird. What what are the advantages to them? Okay, so let's let's talk. Let's put it in perspective here. Zuckerberg really wants to expand your social experience. He he wants to. Keep it gaming focused, it, it seems for the meantime. He's not too concerned about gaming. I don't think no. that he is. I think he wants to 
use the gamers as the guinea pigs to get this technology out, but I think he has wider plans for this as more of like a social virtual yeah. tourism kind of thing. This is a new this is gonna be a new buzzword, Joe. Virtual yep. tourism. So yep. let's let's talk about the pros and cons of, of this outlook of what Zuckerberg's talking about. What what's good about this? What could it do for, for us? Well, for, for the social thing, I mean, obviously for people that are, that are going to want to, well, like, say, like, book a hotel or something off in the Caribbean or something, they could take, like, a virtual tour and see what they're actually going to be getting into. You know, being able to, to actually kind of virtually interact with uh, your, your, your friends on Facebook and all that kind of stuff, I'm sure that that's probably something that we'll want to do, too. But, you know, more importantly for me, for gaming... You know, when, when I look at, at gaming on Facebook, I mean, it's largely these casual games like, you know, like Candy Crush, Farmville, and that kind of stuff. And I, I just don't see how virtual reality fits into those types of games. I, I just, I really don't. Well, I don't see why, how you could you could launch off of a Facebook gaming platform, which to, really, to me, Joe, I, I don't care if anybody gets offended at this, I consider it an artificial game platform. I don't yes. consider most of the people who are heavily invested in Facebook gaming to be respectful of the gaming community. I think most of them are casuals who would never actually admit that they like games and don't, and don't care. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I just, and the other thing is that, okay, Okay, let, we want to talk about what's good. I know it's bad, but let's talk about what's good about this. I don't know. It's it's it's. I'm trying to be devil's advocate because I'm not really impressed. But Total Recall becomes a reality. Well, you know what? Whole, uh, I, I think I think one positive that we can take away from this is that it is you know Facebook obviously has a lot of money. Yes, and, they do. Yes. And uh, you know, and then this is going to give uh, them Oculus, you know, almost kind of an unlimited budget now to kind of do what they want. You know, so the, the definitely funding won't be an issue for Oculus anymore. That's and that's thing. it, Joe. Now that Sony has has succeeded with the critics on the Project Morpheus reveal, and we know that they've they're a multinational that's pretty much got unlimited capital, that it really came down time for for Oculus Rift to decide. Okay, well, we need those those coffers as well, mm -hmm. and it looks like Facebook came calling, and that's where it's gonna go. My problem now with this is is in a lot of how Marcus Notch person has reacted to this. The second major news reveal of the night, Joe, what happened with uh, Notch tonight? He's pulling out of Oculus Rift. He says he does not want to work with Facebook. He is creeped out by them. Wow. Basically, yeah. He, he said he, he it's he's done with Oculus Rift. He just says, you know. Two he, he, weeks he, after, like, he, like he get, major de developments had undertaken, yeah. the company he's, gets sold and, and Marcus is out. He's, give, he's given them props for what they've done, but he's basically saying... We don't like you going uh, the Facebook angle. We he doesn't like Facebook. He's out. That's that's heavy. And, and he had some he had some pretty uh, articulate reasons why. Uh, as I read on Polygon, and he made a really good point, and, and, and I completely agree with him. He said Facebook is not a company of grassroots tech enthusiasts. No. Facebook is not a game tech company. Facebook has a history of caring about building user numbers and nothing but building user numbers. Okay, so, and, and the other problem, he also mentioned something too that I didn't realize is that like he says further on, People have made games for Facebook platforms before, and while it worked great for a while, they were stuck in an, a very unfortunate position when Facebook eventually changed the platform to better fit the social experience they were trying to build. So we're talking about a company that no matter how much, how many dollars they have, they have very limited experience in the game world. It's like the restaurant industry, Joe. Like All these people think they can just get into it and make a killing. I was in the restaurant industry with my parents for years. I know how hard that shit is and it looks easy, but there's, yep. it's just all the little things that, that people like Shuhei Yoshida and Mark Cerny have gone through to create the the reimagining and the restrengthening of the Sony PlayStation brand. And contra, con, contrarily, why well, I believe Microsoft is, is plummeting now because there is no vision. They're yep. shuffling execs around. Yep. And, and I think, Joe, that, that's a big problem. When you bring Oculus Rift into the, the cradle and basically the financial lifeline of a company that really doesn't give a fuck about gaming. You know, do, do you see, do you, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, Joe. No, uh, no I, I feel the same way. You know, up until they got acquired by Facebook, you know, I thought that they were doing some right things and that they were really kind of gaming focused. Being bought by a, by, by a social networking company, I mean, for the Oculus Rift, I mean, I, I personally think that, that gaming is really going to suffer. I think that that's, 
it's going to become primarily a a virtual tourism, virtual social kind of a thing. I I, I think that uh, you know, it's I'm not going to say that's the the death or anything of Oculus Rift, but I, I don't see it as uh, going forward as going to be a, a real kind of a gaming focused thing. Yeah, I think it, I think it, yes, it has future and the potential to become a mainstream. Like you said, tourism device or a total recall kind of fault, like artificial experience device. But in terms of it being intrinsically tied to gaming, I, I think it's really just going to sit in this niche where it'll never really die. Kind of like the Kinect hasn't died because there are people who actually like the Kinect. Well, absolutely. I'd say two percent of the gaming populace likes Kinect. They like Wiimotes. They, they. I, I like PlayStation Move for my gun games. I'm not ever going to yeah. get rid of it. So there's a place, but it'll never take the forefront. Yeah. And, I don't, and that's why now, like, I, like maybe the ninth gen, which is a few years away, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe that'll be the thing. But I, I, I really think that this will be that that novelty device that every generation has. You know, like the fourth generation, yeah, there was the Men the Menacer it, 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 light gun and. Every generation's had its kind of a little, little kind of a gimmicky thing. I, th I, th I think that's what uh, I think for eighth gen, it's going to be the, this VR as, as the gimmicky thing, you know. And, and it's going to be, I mean, uh, you know, historically, you know, consoles have a life cycle of roughly about ten years or so. So, you know, I mean, uh, I, I could be wrong, but I, I think just like. Uh, Motion control was the the gimmick for uh, seventh gen. I think VR is going to be the gimmick for eighth gen. But Sony thinks you're wrong. So let's talk about Project mm -hmm. Morpheus because this has caught the buzz of the industry. And I really do believe Joe that tonight's act, like the, the the announcement of this acquisition, the fact that we know that the Oculus Dev Kit Two is going to have that camera, really came down to some major punches to the gut from that Morpheus reveal at GDC. Mm -hmm. I think they addressed some of the major issues that Oculus has been struggling with using old technology, the PlayStation Move to boot. That yeah. thing just keeps on giving. People like to hate on the PlayStation Move, yep. but man, like that thing, they keep finding new uses for that thing. Yep. And, and, and again, to play the devil's advocate, we've been, we've been hating on VR a lot, but, but here's the thing, it's gonna be a reality, and, and Sony's putting real money behind this thing. I mean, this takes and... a lot of personnel, a lot of capital to, to do this. So, so you saw the, the reveal with me, we were watching the, uh, the Twitter chat, Mm -hmm. What did you learn about Morpheus? So anybody who doesn't know about PlayStation's foray to VR, what do we know about Morpheus so far? The the, the VR they're working on for PS4. You know the the, the biggest thing that, that I noticed and I picked on, up on, uh, you know, in in comparison to the Oculus Rift with uh, with Morpheus, is that I, I saw a, a far greater list of um, of companies, like especially game engines that are going to be supported by this. You know, you got you got Havoc, you got uh, Crytex Engine, you got uh, you know, the the Unreal Engine. I mean, uh, it, it seems like a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot more developers and uh, actual game engines that games are using are are, are are tending to go towards the Morpheus. That, that's that's uh, the first thing that that caught my eye. That it seems to be attracting more attention from game developers. And not only just a multiple developers, but look, but look at the type of of platforms that are going to be here. Unity. I mean, that's yeah. not the first platform you think of when you think of state-of-the-art first-person yeah. games. Unity was built to used to build a lot of these like like retro art indie games and stuff. Yeah. And again, maybe going back earlier to our conversation, Joe, maybe we, that's the, the challenge to VR development now is to start thinking outside the box of first-person games. What else can we do when you're suspended in this virtual space? How else can we reimagine 2D games, for yeah. example, or or non-realistic looking games. Like, why can't we have something that runs at 60 frames a second, that's 1080p in VR, but that's set in like a Minecraft pixel art world. That that at least will work better on the eyes than trying to do too much with, like you said, Joe, the P underpowered PS4 hardware. I'm yes. I'm gonna say it. It is underpowered. I love it, but you know what? I, I ba Battlefield 4 at 900p. It stands. Yep. It can't handle Battlefield 4. So I don't. I think they're. I, I think like it's great that they're they're partnering up with NASA. They did yep. that Mars demo. 
and I think the whole point of that Mars demo Joe was to really, like you said, promote the virtual tourism, which is that, again, that new buzzword that they're really trying to, sorry to say though. Even Sony knows this isn't just about games. They can't just focus on games because that will probably be the novelty part. This really is just gonna go into more of like an augmented non-gaming tourism experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, and you know, when, it, when it, we were watching that reveal. I mean, it seems like they're going into a lot more depth. And, and like I mentioned before, they're using a lot of the uh, pre-existing technology and peripherals that they already have. It's the three-way connectivity. Exactly. Yeah. So it uses your DualShock 4 in conjunction with your stereoscopic camera, in conjunction with your PlayStation Move, which we did not see on Oculus Rift, which I think gets them closer to that latency reduction problem. And I think that got Oculus Rift scared. And I think that they knew that they had to sell the company, get some capital, or else they were done. Because I think that it's like, it was almost like people were so much more sure of this than they were of the Oculus to me. Like, it just seemed like people were really jumping on this. Like, you know, but I, I, even then, like, Adam Sessler tried it. He had his reservations. Yep. You know, it's, uh, you know, for, for me, what, what, what it, it's going to come down to this. You know, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying, trying to put my, my myself in the shoes of just an average gamer, okay? And I'm and, and looking at this and going, what's attractive about this? Uh, that, that, that's how I'm trying to trying to look at this. Uh, just a, a, as a your average every everyday gamer, are are they going to latch onto this? And I, I just can't find myself really saying yes. Yes and no. Um, you know, it, it really just comes down to being able, like, I think it really just comes down to embracing a new length of play time. I think if you can design experiences around 10 to 15 minutes that yeah. you could do, like, say, once a day, yeah, I guess it, it kind of pays for itself. But I mean, you know, even then, like, people are so, people are, it seems like people want to get rid of, of the infrastructure, like, more and more. Like, even people who are, who are moving away from PC gaming and consoles with all of its peripherals and stuff and, and, and discs and, and TVs and just have, playing something on their mobile phone or, or their tablet. I'm wondering if this is just too much to ask of people. I, I'm just wondering if this is going to be another situation, Joe, back in 06, when all the hipster people I knew bought a Wii that weren't even gamers, but they bought it so that they could impress their friends when they came over to a party, so they could play some Wii tennis while they're having a few beers, and then surprise, surprise, two months down the road, what are you, you're asking them what they're playing, oh, it's collecting dusts. And these are the same people who are interested in Steambox, but could care less about PC gaming. And I think it's going to be the same thing, Joel. I think that it's going to be just a lot of casuals who want to be trendy and yeah. buy the next waves of technology to show off to their other trendy friends, and they're going to put it away. And, and that's the problem. You can't just rely on the future of your platform on just a few hardcore fans. You need that mainstream, not just... The, the, the people who buy it at first, but the people who continue to support it with software. Exactly, you know, you know and it, this is tr trying to come out at a time when we're seeing a lot of kind of games that are kind of taking that uh, minimalist approach. You know, you know, a lot of it on mobile, some on, on uh, consoles and, and, and PC, but uh, you know, while there's there's this uh, advance to like virtual reality, it's like I said, it's coming out at the same time where we're, we're seeing like this resurgence of, of, of just simpler games that you just come in and enjoy, have a good time with, and then get back out. With, with virtual reality, it's like they're, they're just uh, they're trying to get like right immersed and get like right like physically and like involved or they guess with, with the, the moving around and like it just it's you know to, to me it just it feels like it's you know it's something that, that, that should be researched it's, it's important but I think that, that it's coming a generation or two too soon. You're right, Joe, and I think it ha plays a lot to, to do, it has a lot to do with the state of the industry itself. Like you said, the, 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 the people have been forecasting another uh, another video game crash, which, which I don't think is going to happen because too many video games exist on too many platforms to keep it from totally crashing like it did in the 80s. But, like, you, like we said before, in this climate where your whole fortunes of your company can rest on one bad IP or one good IP, what are developers gonna do? Are they gonna go for the risky of, of trying to go into this Wild West frontier? And Sony admitted that this is a Wild West frontier. We haven't written the rules for virtual reality. We don't know which games are gonna work yet. Do you think 
that like these these like the mid-level developers like say like platinum games or, or, or the, the, who aren't at the top but have their fans do you think they're really gonna take that risk no. and just and it just implode their whole company over, over over a possible fad or do you think they're gonna embrace what's comfortable which is 1080p 60 frames a second and next wave 4k gaming which i yes. think is where most developers are gonna stay at the end of the day joe kind of coming full circle again even though it's an interactive activity it's still in the passive entertainment genre for me it's, it's like watching yes. a movie it's like sitting on your couch and reading a comic book you're not jogging while reading a comic book you're relaxing so you could your mind's at rest so you can take it in and, and use your brain to interact rather than your body you let the game do the body work for you and you, you you give your brain a workout i think that's the whole point of video games at their core yes you know we talked about that you know just our, our motivations as gamers you know we just want we want to get in you know do something you know just uh, to, to kind of have an escape from reality and just kind of do stuff they would they wouldn't normally be able to do and and, and then move on with the rest of our we're going with our everyday lives you know and, and also you know bring up something that I've mentioned on a previous show is that uh, some of these uh, companies like uh, you know and I've said you know Nintendo is especially guilty of this uh, of telling gamers what they want and not listening to what they want you know I, I think if you would go out there and ask the majority of gamers do they want VR I, I'm betting you that the majority of them majority of them will tell you that they don't I'll tell you what gamers want, Joe. They want innovative stuff. They, regardless of how you play it, they just want innovation. Okay, you know what? And they, and what they want, Joe? They, they want better graphics on their TV screen. That's at the heart of it. That's What's really most of the fanboy shit about? It's about oh, the Xbox multi-platform copy didn't quite go up to 1080p. Oh no, we should not buy it now. I'm sorry, that's gonna change when DirectX 12 comes out. But again, different topic. Let's talk about Microsoft for a second before we finish off this table. Let's just say, you know, randomly, Phil Harrison, we're listening to this podcast right now. Microsoft hasn't revealed anything yet. All they said is that we've got some trademarks we filed. We are going, we're interested in virtual reality. We find it interesting. And I love that word interesting, Joe. It has so many different meanings so when somebody says interesting. Yeah. What do you think? D does Microsoft even need to get into this or should they be doing this? And what should they be doing? Personally, I, I think what they need to do when, when it comes to gaming, number one, get somebody that, that actually knows games and knows what they're talking about to run that part of the company. Yeah, number, start with that first. Number one. Right, because right, right now, Microsoft. I've said this before. Microsoft, the the main majority of their business is with corporate, with big companies, with uh, old version of Windows running their 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 systems and stuff. That that's the bulk of Microsoft's business. Gaming for them, t to me, is just kind of like a side thing for them. Right, that's where now where they make their money. Uh, I'm gonna I'll say it right now. You, people can call me on it if they want. But no, Microsoft there's nobody's gonna call you on it because the investors have already called them on it. They yep. want X Microsoft to sell the Xbox business. It yep. loses money for them. It does. Yep. They, that's what happened with the 360, with all with all the, the meltdowns uh, with consoles. I personally burned through what three or four of them. You know, they they didn't make money on that. There's no friggin' way that they made money replacing all those consoles. I'm sorry. You know, and uh, you know it's. You know, if I, th I think if they're going to attempt to make a thing, it's probably going to be something tied to the Kinect somehow. But, uh, I, you know, I, yeah. But, uh, you know, with them just kind of basically saying oh, we're working on something and it's interesting, that doesn't tell me anything. I let's just look at the, f the overall failure of the Kinect and even, even the Wii. You know, let's look at this. The whole idea, again, of people getting up and jumping around their TV and flailing their arms the around. Wii, I said this on a blog of mine. The Wii... Putting the motion controls in the Wii kept that from gaining mass appeal. And also using GameCube architecture versus Absolutely. the HD technology. There were a lot of things Absolutely. wrong, but I think you're right. The main thing was, and not only that, Joe, but the fact that we knew it was a cop-out. The fact that when you realized that you could win Wii Sports by flicking your wrist, yeah. gone. The disconnect is right there. Boom. It's, it's not yeah. virtual reality anymore. It's just, it's a, it's a gimmick. Yeah, I remember playing. I remember playing with... Uh, my, my, my little cousin, we were playing, uh, I think it was uh, Wii Tennis. You know, she, she, uh, I'm there, like, trying to fully get into the experience. I'm trying to, like, actually, like, pretend like I'm playing tennis. And she's sitting there, like, she's she played, like, thousands of hours of this game. She's just sitting there doing this. 
flick exactly. for, for the audio listeners. I'm I'm flicking my wrist because you're and, taking and, a com- and, yeah. And she was she she would I was getting my ass handed to me. I, I, here I am flailing around like a full like an idiot with my whole body. She's sitting there flicking with her wrist, and she was she was she was beating me like without even trying, you know. And this it's you know coming. I just think that that uh, trying to do these kind of things, you know, we already said it. You know, it's just it's trying to get this gimmick to, to come into the, the mainstream. I, I just don't think that it's the right move. It's using technology. It's, it's like the Wii situation, using an advanced technology on inferior hardware, which the Wii was. Man, it was shitty hardware. It's, like we know it, that, and we know that because the PlayStation Move was much more accurate. You know, it, 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 it worked better. And I, I think it's, it's it's like they're just trying to add like another feature to something to try and make it a selling point, you know. And you, and you see this a lot on 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 new uh, Samsung phones that come out. They they they, they throw on a ton of uh, features and sensors and stuff like that, that nobody is going to use, right? Like just focus on like adding useful features that that, that users and gamers are going to want to actually use. Don't force this upon on, on people that don't want it. Yeah, again, listen to the things that all the fanboys are fighting over and concentrate on those. Yeah. Like like you said, like I mean, at least, you know, with with the whole resolution debate, it looks like Microsoft is taking steps to correct that with this whole yeah. DirectX 12 thing. I, I that remains to be seen if this is going to bump up the resolution of these games, but at least that seems like they're focusing their their efforts in the right direction. And this is my message for Microsoft. Use this to leverage your weight in this console war. While Sony's out throwing money at VR, invest that money in developers. Invest yeah. that money in franchises and IPs. This is what the Xbox is lacking. It is not lacking Kinect games. It is not lacking a VR headset. It is lacking games, okay? It is lacking compelling reasons other than Titanfall and Halo 5 to make me go and buy a second console right now when I can barely afford to pay my bills. Yeah. Okay, no, and, and that's where Microsoft could really leverage this and shift this negative momentum into positive momentum and almost pull the rug out from Sony. I don't think it would be that dire. I think Sony has yeah. got enough money to to take a bath on this. In yeah. in reality, I think they do. You know, you know, at, at the end of the day, Mike, you know what this comes down to? As gamers, what do we want? We want fun games to play. Compelling interactive experiences that cannot be done on any other media platform, whether it be film, exactly. comic books, television, relating to a, a blog you recently wrote that I, I still need to read, but you know, I, I can kind of already get at what you're getting at, uh, of really getting to the core of what makes this medium great. And you don't need peripherals nope. to do that. It, you just need your imagination, you know? Yep. And, and like, you know, as well as I do, Joe, sometimes a $10 pixel art indie game can command your attention way more than all these crazy technologies that they want to throw at us that we never asked for. Nope. That's the main point I think you're getting at, Joe. We never asked for VR. We nope. didn't sit there and start making petitions. Oh man, you got to make this the next big thing. No, all we've been arguing about is stop making military shooters. Stop making Assassin's Creed sequels every year. Try to make that hardware worth the money we're paying for it. Stop, you know, this is what we want. This is what you need to focus on. Make 1080p and 60 frames the standard rather than the exception. That's where I want to see R&D going into because I want to yeah. see next-gen games on my TV. Exactly. Uh, I'm, uh, like I said, for me, I, I, I want to play fun games. Whether, whether you know, I, I've said this before, you know, a, a really fantastic, really compelling game doesn't have to have all of the, the, this... All the bells and whistles. Uh, at, uh, at the end of the day, it just comes down to a, a game that that, that that nails that that gameplay element that hooks you in and that keeps you coming back. I mean, look look at Joe. Look at me playing Outlast mm -hmm. on PS4. That's me in front of a screen in a dark room yeah. that shocks the shit out of me without any headset. Oh yeah. Without any other contraptions other than my imagination and my perception glued to that screen. And for me, that's enough. Yep. That, that's all we need to do. So I, I think that, uh, you know, we can't ignore virtual reality. I think it's going to be there in front of us. But at the same time, if it succeeds, great. I'm not going to say that, like, it can't succeed. Yeah. I just think that, like, with the Wii, like, with that, that argument I was making, Joe, that maybe the 
the Wiimote could have been better, if the hardware could have been better. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they're imposing VR on the eighth generation when I originally predicted that it would become more of like a ninth gen thing, along with 4K. Yeah. I, I think it's something that's gonna be tested out in the eighth generation that may be perfected, but I don't expect to just all automatically switch over nope. anytime soon. Nope. Uh, it's, you know, I, I, I love the way that uh, my games are now. You know, and and like I said, you know, just just create just create compelling game experiences, no matter how, how how they're done. At the end of the day, that's for me what's all about is that that the fun games. So I got a, I got a message for Sony. Sony, yes, you've had a good start. You know, you, you've definitely come back from some of your missteps in the seventh generation. But just as fast as you can rise, you can fall again if you make the wrong decision. So I, I, I understand why your stockholders want you to compete with Oculus Rift. I know you wanna be part of this potential trend. If it does take off, you got, you'll be billionaires. But please don't, rate, don't rest your fortune on this. Get, make sure you give us our Uncharted 4. Make, make yes. sure you're, you're giving money Please. to all these developers <laughs> to keep making incredible screen-focused traditional games because that's really at the end what we're all going to be playing when we get sick of wearing these headsets. And 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 and, and don't forget to, to, to keep supporting their their indep They were very very good at this at the beginning, getting all these independent developers on board. Keep that up too. Don't, don't absolutely don't, don't invest all your time on, on on this research and forget about that part because it's the, it's the future and lifeblood of our industry. We might, like you just said, it's indie games are becoming very very more important. Exactly. So you know, I, I'm sure we can coexist with it, but uh, you know, more to come. We're still in the prototype phase, but I, I, right. I'd say if I had an overall message for the whole industry, I'd say tread lightly and stick to your roots because that's that's where your bread and butter is. So Absolutely. this has been a fascinating episode of Roundtable. I'd like to thank as always my co-host Joe Morin. I'm Mike Frusios. Joe, I, I did mention a little bit about the latest blog you wrote. Maybe you want to just tell people, direct people where to read it. It's at, uh, as always, at joemorin.blogspot.ca. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe and uh, my, my latest one I, I talked about, uh, the topic is our, our are cinematic driven games really games and I, and I, I go into into pretty good detail st stating my case that uh, that yes they are they're, they're they're a different kind of game but uh, yes they are still games but done in a very unique very, in a very different and very bold new frontier kind of a way and also if you ever want to catch us live on twitch uh, I have my, uh, Joe and I always uh, do play and chat alongs on twitch.tv forward slash 24bit heroes. All sorts of games are being played, but all sorts of conversations are being had. So if you want to continue the conversation with us and just kind of like an informal scenario, watch us play some games and all that fun stuff, check us out on Twitch. Make sure you subs subscribe to us on YouTube if you have a Gmail account. That way you get the uh, future contract drops, but just, you know, just search for Joystick Justice League and you'll find our videos pretty quickly. Again, I'm Mike Fursios. I'm Joe Warren. And you've been listening to Roundtable Episode 6. Stay tuned for more and peace. Game on, guys. Game on. <laughs>